everyone, it's Janet here with a few ideas for you for the furry friends in your life. And what we're going to be working with is the Sweet Little Stockings bundle. You're actually going to see this in play maybe once or twice later on today as well too, just because there's some amazing elements. As with all of Stampin' Up's bundles, you have the choice to buy them individually, so just buying the stamps or just buying the dies or getting them as a cost savings bundle. Um, you're gonna have dies to match the stockings, to match the little critters, the packages, the hats, the little candy cane elements, and then you've got a fun little banner piece here as well. So let's take a look at um, how easy it is and we'll put one together as well. So prior to the pandemic and COVID, whenever I would be out and about um, with social events or going somewhere to visit friends and stuff over the holidays, I always made sure to have a treat for the pets. Something else that I also do is that when I'm visiting larger cities over the holidays, um, especially in the warmer climates, New Orleans is a great example. A lot of the homeless population also have pets. And so I always have um, a little holiday package that has hand sanitizer and socks and then treats for the little puppies. And um, so I always keep a bunch of these ready-made in my package. When I am creating treats for the holidays, I like to stick with what I call name brand treats, milk bones, for example. It may not be the total healthiest treat that's out there on the market, but it's a recognizable brand that people feel safe with, as opposed to maybe something that's homemade that they don't know, they're a little unsure of. People um, are cautious about what they feed their pets. Pets have allergies just like humans do. So if I'm giving little treats, I tend to gravitate to milk bone. In addition, I love to work with milk bone because they have five, di four different sizes. This is medium, this is small, and then you have your teeny tiny little ones, which I absolutely love. And while I'm focusing on milk bones and dogs because I'm a dog mama, you could definitely be doing treats with um, little kitty treats in them. And I do have two grand fur babies that are cats, so I will definitely be putting some fun catnip or some other little treats in a little mason jar like this for them. As far as the little bags, these bags are not from Stampin' Up. You can find cellophane bags in all different sizes um, simply by going to Google or going to your local big box hobby store and um, checking them all out. What I usually like to do when I'm trying to size bags is I need to know the, the dimension of the treat that I'm putting inside of it. In this case, a lot of times I would just simply take the milk bones with me to the craft store if I was going locally and actually going in person and I would just measure them right up against the bag. If I'm ordering online, again, you need to know the dimensions of them. What's fun about this little size bag here as it fits two medium going up and down or four going side to side. They're not total tight fit, but they're great. So I love um, giving treats and things like that to our pets. So let's put one of these little treats here together. Um, oops, I can't do it because I didn't bring all the pieces to the table, did I? Um, hold on, I don't usually do this. I usually don't like to walk away, but so what I did here was I die cut one of our large rectangle dies. I wanted the stitch marks and then I just simply folded it in half. You would go ahead and staple this shut and then to adhere this onto here, you're gonna go ahead and use adhesive. After this has been stapled shut, or you don't even need to staple it, you can just hold it like that. Okay, so we've got our little piece. I did emboss the greeting in white. What I've done ahead of time is I die cut some of the stockings out. What's really cool is in this bundle, you also have coordinating paper and the dies do fit with that. And so I cheated instead of stamping the stockings, I die cut them right out of the paper. And Let's just grab a couple of other little pieces here. We'll show you those all here in just a second. So here is the stocking that we're gonna use. I'm gonna just put some adhesive on the back of that. We're gonna tip it slightly sideways. 
Through the magic of television, I went ahead and stamped our little puppy's heads um, and then colored him using little Stampin' Blends. We're gonna go ahead and we'll put a dimensional on the back of him because we want him peeking up over the stocking. So we'll put a little dimensional on the back of him. And then just because I have the pieces here and to show you how we can build them up, we have a cute little stocking hat so we can put a little stocking hat on him. And then we have choices. We can do bows if it's a little, little girl puppy. We can do our um, poinsettia, or not poinsettia, our holly leaves. We're gonna do our holly leaves just because I have Tegan Marburg. So just like that, you've got a quick and easy treat. Now to show you how we put this one together here, these mason jars are available at the Stampin' Up! website and they're indispensable for gift giving, guys. I mean, the number of things that you can put in them, from tea bags to coffee grounds to small treats like gummy bears and M&Ms and chocolate, um, put you know pieces of homemade peppermint bark in them, bath salts, tea lights, you name it, I mean, it's just amazing what you can put in them and they are food safe. They are jam jars, so technically, yes, you can also put jams and jellies in them. So I went ahead and just used some of our circles to put a little piece right here on the top. The Very Merry Greeting is from here and we just embossed it on a scrap piece of Always Artichoke. In this case, I'm using Cherry Cobbler and Always Artichoke. Same little puppy that you just saw, same little hat. The little difference is, is in the tag here that's tied to the front of it. This is the stocking die that is available in those framelits, okay? And what I did is I created tags out of them. And the way that you're going to do that, if you've not done this before, is you're gonna take cardstock and you're gonna fold it. And you're gonna take your die and you're gonna lay it so that the top edge, and in this case, yes, you're gonna lose your little loop, it's okay. Um, you're gonna lay that just beyond and you're gonna run it through. And what ends up happening is you end up with these little stockings that open and close. And this technique works with so many dies, okay, that you can put them on that fold and turn things into dies. So then what I did was I had a stocking here and that does have the little loop. And I'm gonna just simply put it on top of this stocking. And so I've got it layered and there's my tag. So that's exactly what I did. Oops, I know my bow's gonna come off. I don't have it glued on, I just have it tied around the top. So, and I'll tell you one other fun thing about using these mason jars for treats is that, for example, if you're giving something to maybe somebody at work, they can kind of take in and get their little treats and just kind of go, you know, go back and forth a few times or maybe over the holidays you can pop by their desk and refill it for them. Um, but I love that these are not sealed down and you can sneak in and grab a treat or two out of them. So while I have this handy and we're talking about pets, even though these aren't crafted and the jars are stamping up, I wanna just give you a few other pet ideas that fit down inside of these. One of the things that I like to do with my boys is put cute little bow ties on them. This is actually the ones that they'll be wearing for Thanksgiving, um, but there's lots and lots of bow ties out there, whether you go to a pet store, a little pet boutique, Etsy, Amazon, you name it. My favorite is Etsy so I can support other small businesses. These fit right down inside, and this is a rather large bow tie, so you could actually probably put another one inside if you wanted to. And then something else that fits down inside. The other thing that I like to do with my boys from time to time, much to their dismay, the bow ties don't seem to bother them because they velcro right over their closet. <laughs> but um, this will be Marburg's Thanksgiving attire as well because, oh my God, does he counter surf. But anyway, many of you like to put bandanas on your dogs. I know quite a few of you have um, silhouettes and different machines that you're able to um, what's the word that I want? Print and create things. Some of you sew, so making handmade bandanas for pets can be something that's kind of fun to do. And uh, we're just gonna kind of roll this up like a little sausage and then we can put that down. Oops, I didn't roll it tight enough. 
but it does go down inside. Trust me, I practiced it, believe it or not. But I can roll it up nicer than that, but you get the idea so you can roll up some sweet little pet bandana as well and then decorate it with that cute lid. So when you're looking at your Christmas gifting for the year, don't forget the little pets. Don't forget if you're out visiting to bring a little treat for the, the fur babies that'll be at the house that you're visiting, your grand fur babies. And if you're out and about um, on the streets, consider the, the pets that are um, out there with their owners um, just trying to make it. Thanks guys.